Hello, I'm David Moss, and I'd like to talk to you about one terabyte of data in filing cabinets. How many filing cabinets do you think it would take to store one terabyte of data? Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because we are running out of disk space. We buy ever more powerful servers with ever bigger disk capacity, and we still run out of disk space before the scheduled upgrade period has elapsed. Our servers are designed to run for about four to five years before they are replaced. But we are starting to run out of capacity at about the three year mark. The second reason is that our backups are just too big. We're starting to overflow the capacity of our tapes. We're even starting to run out of time to back up overnight. And because of this huge volume of data, our tape hardware also starts wearing out at about the three year mark. And what do you think the leading reason is for this storage crisis? Photographs. When the camera was first invented back in 1827, we didn't take very many photographs. In fact, we didn't take very many right through till the end of the 80s, about 1987, and things really started to take off from there. Things stayed pretty much the same as cameras were made smaller and smaller, but they didn't really take off until things went digital. Suddenly, everybody could have a camera in their bag and they didn't even have to have the photographs developed. Then they put the camera inside the smartphone. Now everyone had not only a camera in their back pocket, but a video camera too. And guess where all those video files and photographs ended up? On our servers. So what does a terabyte of photographs look like in real life? And remember, many schools are filling up a terabyte disk with photographs every year. Just how much space does one terabyte of photographs take up? Do you think one filing cabinet will hold a terabyte of photographs? What about two filing cabinets? What about five? Not even close yet. Ten? It's getting pretty crowded in the office now, but still no. With a hundred filing cabinets, there's no room left in the office for people now, but still not even close. It actually takes 1,250 filing cabinets to hold one terabyte of photographs. It wouldn't just take your office, or even your entire school building. It would take an Australian rules football field to hold all those filing cabinets. And just think, some schools think nothing of adding a terabyte of data to their server every year. This is a school photograph that was taken in 1900. Why can we still see this image today? We can still see this image because it's recorded on photographic paper. And it was stored in good conditions for paper. And finally, it was labelled with metadata. We know where it was taken, when it was taken, possibly who was in it. They probably scribbled it on the back. But the people next century won't be looking at our photographs because our photographs are recorded on a hard disk inside a server that will probably get thrown away. More to the point, there will be no way to read them in less than 20 to 30 years time. Has anyone out there got a spare five and a quarter inch disk drive lying around just in case they want to get a couple of photographs off an old disk? And the saddest part is that even if we do put those hard drives on the shelf and leave them there, what's on them will fade to digital noise in only three to ten years of disuse. But the biggest reason why people won't bother looking at our photographs in a hundred years' time is that we don't store metadata with them. We take thousands of photographs every year, but we don't know what any of them are. Take a look over on the left. Those file names tell us nothing about what's in those photographs. Down at the bottom are the metadata fields that we could fill in. You know, we could say who's in the photograph, who took the photograph, where the photograph was taken, but nobody bothers doing this. 
So is your school adding terabyte after terabyte of photographs and videos without metadata that no one is ever going to look at again? One good rule of thumb is that if it isn't worth labelling, it isn't worth keeping. If you follow this rule, you will find that the number of photographs and videos stored in your server will drop from tens of thousands every year to hundreds and all of them will be useful. The rest of them, the ones that people can't be bothered labelling, delete them. No one's ever going to look at them again anyway. Go through the photographs, label the ones that you want to keep and delete the rest. Have an annual purge. And that brings us to what should we do with the ones that we want to keep? The ones that we've labelled with metadata and we're sure that people are going to be interested in in years to come. We shouldn't just leave them on the server. The only way that we can guarantee these will be able to be read in 20 to 100 years time is if we burn them to an archive quality DVD. Hey, and guess what? Once we've done that, we don't need to keep them on the server anymore. Now the reason that I'm doing this is because we are running out of disk space. We buy ever more powerful servers with ever bigger disk capacity and we still run out of disk space before the scheduled upgrade period has elapsed. Remember those problems from back at the beginning? Well all you have to do is follow that simple rule. Label the photographs and videos that you want to keep with metadata, burn them onto an archive quality DVD and delete the rest from your server at the end of each year. So that's it from me. You know how much a terabyte of data takes up in filing cabinets, enough to cover an Australian rules football field. Even more importantly, you know how to stop all that data from cluttering up your file server year after year.